<sighs> okay, I think it's about time we get honest with each other. Because we all know that season 5, the series finale, but not the universe finale of The Boys, is going to be fire. But I think it's about time that we as an audience have a discussion on does bigger always mean better? Gay! The Boys is a show, well, actually, I should probably say a franchise now that took the world by storm back in 2019. Fresh off the hype train of Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, concluding what, in my opinion, is the greatest cinematic achievement of all time with the Infinity Saga, the superhero genre was a money-making machine back then, with movies like Aquaman even able to hit the big B. Man, how times have changed. And honestly, when I think about the boys' successful run to the top of the mainstream entertainment, to the point where I am truly starting to consider Homelander could become an iconic character, it's hard to not think about how the trajectory of the genre that walked so the boys could run has tanked so catastrophically, and witnessing in live time how, in many ways, the scales have shifted. Because would the boys be as digestible of a show if it wasn't for the downfall of the MCU? If, say, hypothetically, the quality of Phase 3 transferred over to the Disney Plus shows of Phase 4, would the boys be the phenomena that it somehow stumbled into becoming? Sure, the compare and contrast of the light-hearted, quippy jokes of the MCU to the grounded, gruesome, and more satirical world of the boys was a palate cleanser that wasn't only appreciated, but needed at the time after dedicating over a decade to the journey that was the Infinity Saga and all of the other superhero movies that came here and there from the Spider-Man trilogies all the way down to Catwoman. Man, it was a time. But at the end of the day, that's not the reality that we live in. And because of that, we as an audience have been blessed with a fantastic show riddled with nuance, badass, and relatable characters. A narrative so engaging in a show that actually understands the concept of subverting the audience's expectations, therefore having effective plot twists, and leading to an experience where the show truly leaves the viewer in the dark with its unpredictability. A world so fucked up and, for some reason, feels realistic and so on brand as if you're right at home. And most importantly, the aspect of the show that I think truly put it on the map as such a fan favorite. The ability to produce comedic satire on just the average person in their day-to-day -day lives. It was relatable and refreshing to say the least. So what happened? I don't know if The Boys Season 4 is an example of a show that has gotten to the point where Amazon is just making their cake and eating it too, or just a show that's at its point where the showrunners don't know their own heads from their own asses. It's hard to say. But obviously the complaints, and no, not the ones that you immediately just assumed, which makes sense, but the real complaints from real people are definitely there and valid from my point of view. Because unlike the outrage that some of the fans of the show felt with the political commentary, I know this taste. I have been asked to ingest and I have digested this secret sauce many, many times. This is filler. The Boys Season 4 is the definition of a filler arc, and I don't think it would necessarily be a negative thing if this season wasn't just so damn slow, to the point where it felt like nothing of substance really happened until the mess of the events that happened in the finale. It was not their best paced season, to say the least. But at this point, I'm just gonna start yapping, so let's go ahead and get into... Huh. You know what's funny? I just realized that I wasn't making YouTube videos back when The Boys Season 3 came out, so I never really talked about the video game structured narrative that The Boys really has. What I mean by that is that while we have a main sacred plotline that keeps the show moving forward, the side quest with our other characters and how the show is able to overlap them all together was one of the reasons that made this show so engaging from an audience's POV. But because that would take an insanely long time to actually recap what all of our characters were getting up to this season, and because most of the side missions and character growth this season was either retreading past storylines or just simply not interesting, I'm looking at you, Firecracker fans. We're going to keep this relatively streamlined and straight to the point in order to not lose ourselves and get to the praising and the slander. The Boys Season 4 picks up immediately after the events of Season 3 and Gen V Season 1. Don't forget about that. But in reality, there's only three main factors that genuinely matter. Homelander's rise in popularity amongst the populace, Victoria Newman as Vice President-elect and her alliance with Homelander, 
and the soup virus that was cooked up at Godolkin University in Gen V. Then season 4 pretty much follows the same foundation as its sister seasons, with the boys gearing up and continuing the good fight against Homelander. I already mentioned one of them before, but with some new recruits that join the Seven and stand in Homelander's side like Firecracker, a super hot conservative extremist type with the podcast the size of my YouTube channel, and Sister Sage, the smartest dumbass alive. It seems as if Homelander and Vicky have their sights in the bag and the battle won, especially with Butcher in and out of commission due to a brain tumor from overuse of Temp V. With the boys leaderless, Frenchie and Kimiko playing through old storylines, Starlight just kinda being there, and Huey being the most developed character in the season for some reason, will the boys be able to survive for an already renewed season 5 in order to continue their journey in creating a Homelander free world? Okay, with all of that being said, are we ready to admit as an audience that Homelander, Huey, and surprisingly A-Train were the only actual three characters that decided to show up this season? I mentioned earlier how well versed I am in the field of filler and how that doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. As an audience, I feel like it's relatively understandable that The Boys Season 5, the series finale of the show, is receiving a lot of the focus in order to end on a high note. I feel like we as an audience understand setup and payoff, but unfortunately, the best way I can really describe my overall feelings towards this season is that it is simply unfocused. The characters are a prime example of what I mean. Characters such as Frenchie, Kimiko, Starlight, MM, Butcher, oh god, I think I just named the entirety of the boys crew, have absolutely nothing to do this season. And when it comes to certain characters like Frenchie, Kimiko, and MM, characters where I feel like the writers have written their characters into a corner where there's really nowhere for them to go, therefore nothing for them to do, Hence why I say that Frenchie and Kimiko throughout the majority of this season were just wasted characters treading their way through already used storylines in order to get to a finale that frankly just felt unearned. But unfortunately, I feel like there's kind of no denying, at least in my eyes, that Billy was the most egregious use of filler character writing that we were asked to digest. I mean, it could just be my complete uninterest in the character of Ryan, or the fact that we as an audience knew Billy's CIA secret five episodes before he did, therefore just making his entire character arc a drag throughout the entirety of the season. But when you have a character that is one of the faces of your franchise, you would think that a little bit more grace would have been thrown his way. Because again, much like with season three, the opposite writing strategy was given towards Homelander's character. It's relatively obvious that over the time of the boys' rise in popularity, that Homelander is the key the main draw for this IP overall. And when you're watching this season, you feel it as an audience member of him becoming our main focus, which I was not really mad at considering the side quests that were going on outside of his character. And I guess in order to touch on some of the complaints that you'll see on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't actually care about the majority of them, in theory. Like Frenchie being with Colin, or the Firecrackers versus the Starlighters, my issue is with the nuanced writing of it all, and how this season, the intelligence really seems to have taken a back seat or flew south for the winter because it is nowhere to be seen. Overall, the entirety of the season was just lackluster and unfocused in comparison to once was, and I'm not quite sure if that's because not every season can be the greatest season. I've only seen that one time with Avatar The Last Airbender where each and every season just got better and better. Comment down actually if you know any other show, please. This is something that I've been talking about with my mates for like a couple weeks. As someone who is well versed, upon conclusion, it was just obvious that this was just a setup season for what is to come, but because we didn't know what to do with half of the cast of our characters, from an audience's POV, it ultimately just ended up feeling like filler. And while it definitely had some highlights, especially in the finale, does it really feel earned? So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, no need to tickle your fancy on this one. Unfortunately, The Boys Season 4 is mid. It's filled with characters that either 1. I don't care about, or 2. Filled with characters that I do care about, with absolutely nothing to do, or just off being a wanker somewhere. Justice for A-Train though. I didn't really talk about him at all during this video, 
but he finally decided to show up in his own show and become a character. Oh, and one last shout out to Ashley, one of, if not the most relatable character of all time put on the small screen until episode 7. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below, just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.